This has come from Douglas W and Sharan G. Any reason why Southgate appears to be totally ignoring Jaden Sancho? I mean, I think I know we've got a question coming later on, which talks about I think Southgate's favourites, and I, I don't think it's as simple as that. He's worked with a certain group of players longer than he's worked with others. So it makes sense why he's leaning on them. It's it's not just these are my mates and we you know we get along better. It, there's a reason behind it, but I was very surprised that he didn't have an appearance on Friday because it was the sort of game that was screaming out for for him and and for, for Grealish to an extent, but he didn't really quite get enough time to make his mark. For someone to take the game by the scruff of the neck and just say. I'm going to run at you and try and cause some problems. Now, we know Southgate probably wouldn't have told Sancho or Grealish to do that because that's not the kind of manager he is, but it needed someone to do that and to maybe not listen to Southgate and say, you know what, I'm going to do this myself. Um, and I, I would like to see Sancho in the next game, definitely. Um, I, I hope I hope he... I don't know if he'll start, but I hope he'll get a good sort of 20, 30 minutes because I think he he could be really influential. I mean, Carl, you've probably been thinking you're going to be writing about Jadon Sancho for the last few years now in the <laughs> Manchester United shirt, but would you like to see him in the England shirt? Absolutely. I don't... I, I, I agree with Flo. I can't see him starting. I'd, I'd see... No. Nah. I'd see you, this might be a chance for Rashford or possibly Foden to have yet another start, but... I, it would be hubrist, hubristic, bordering on arrogance to not give Sancho at least half an hour against Czech Republic. He is, I think this is the interesting thing where it's that state where a player is injured and then you invent how good he is in your mind. Oh, it happens all the time. All so the time. if only to avoid that happening, Southgate needs to give Sancho a little bit. So English football fans that haven't seen too much Bundesliga can go, oh, that's what he is. That's what he's good at. Because he's really good. And I think one thing that might surprise everyone is he's not lightning quick, but no. his playmaking skills and his ball creation in terms of how well he is at making passes. And and this sounds really simple. He's just really good at staying on side. <laughs> I, I, I can't make that sound more intelligent. I've rarely seen a wide player who can run and pass and shoot, who's just that good at going, and I'm just going to take a step back now. And the counter-attack is still on. Um so, yeah, I, I think he's very good at breaking the lines, but also he's very good at maintaining them, if that makes any sense. So uh, yeah. I, th I think I think England as well are just crying for a player that is going to drag defenders away. We haven't really seen enough of that. And I think Sancho would be the perfect player to do mm -hmm. that, is to just, just come and do a few magic tricks on the side and distract people, pull a rabbit out of the hat, um, get everyone distracted by you, and then, you know, Kane can make a cheeky little run in behind that's what's got to happen at the moment especially on Friday and I know you know you guys talked about this and Michael Cox talks about it a lot in his piece it's just with the tempo being so slow if England are going to do that they they need to get creative with how slow that they they play the ball and what they're doing with it yes yes so you know doing magic, magic tricks it I wrote a piece on the athletic about Grealish and and the concept of gravity so he said that when Jack Grealish is on the field Defenders go, oh God, that's Jack Grealish. And then immediately gravitate towards him because they know what Jack Grealish can do. So I mean, even if Grealish is on a bad day, he's always sucking defenders away from their task, which means he's just a net positive for nearly every single attack right now. So he doesn't necessarily have to be fantastic. He can just, again, dri you know, dribble around the place, draw loads of fouls, get those free kicks and whatnot, which can allow the ball to get be delivered into Harry Kane. Sancho is a very strange player because... He should have more gravity than he currently does uh, because we none of us watch the Bundesliga, so you don't realise how terrifying he is to loads of other players across Europe. So, yeah, fine. Next question's from James P, and we also had similar questions from Rahim Matthew and Matt C. I think basically what James is asking is, why do England have this same old problem, Carl, of adapting in-game to situations? So in 2018 against Croatia, England failed really to adapt, and that was one of the reasons why we went out the World Cup. It's a different set of players now, probably a, a better set of players, I would say, but we're still seeing the same kind of problems of adaptation during games. How do you see it? This is hard, right? If this is this adaptation in team sport, especially a team sport that requires 11 members 
of your team is very hard. It's not like basket. So there are some sports which are called strong link sports, which is you know basketball, hockey, anything that's about five six is strong link. So the best player tends to decide what's going on. Football is very much a sport that's a weak link sport. So Germany beat Portugal because Nelson Semedo played for Portugal. And Germany just went, we're going to run at that guy every single time. And it's going to be amazing. And that's how they got three of their goals. Maybe even four. Because Nelson Semedo was the weak link in Portugal. Not because Cristiano Ronaldo, Cristiano Ronaldo, one of the best football players in the world. He's a strong link, but he cannot drag a team anymore. And when you talk about adjustments... It's not just the adjustment of... It, it's not as simple as one player, like, say, Declan Rice going, bollocks to this. Sorry for saying that. Going, bollocks to this. I'm going to run 20 yards forward and then I'm going to pass it to someone else. Because if he does that, Calvin Phillips and Mason Mount go, what are you doing? Oh, God, I have to run here. I've got to do this. I've got to do this. Tyrone Mings will then have to go, hang on, that space is not meant to be there. Um, so I'd say the first half wasn't England being bad. That was Scotland doing their job, right? That is Scotland mm. doing very very good things to stop England from doing the thing they want to do there was a really good moment where Declan Rice is again trying to progress the ball and then basically Scotland's middle three just split into a triangle and like one of them covered not quite the not quite covering Calvin Phillips but just stood next to Calvin Phillips a little bit and one of them stood next to Mason Mount and looked and they both looked at uh, Rice and went go on then do something Rice realizing that if he tries any of those passes he could try the pass but he will likely get you know depossessed and it'll be a turnover and then Scotland will flood forward. Or he could just turn back inside and pass to a centre-back. And that's the thing. It's not only adjusting based on the opposition, but you're also adjusting based on what your other personnel are doing. This is, you know, when you say, when I'm really annoyed, I'm saying Harry Kane stay in the middle. Because when he's dropping deep, that means that creates other problems for other members of personnel. The final kick of the game against England had Jack Grealish being surrounded by three members of staff, of Scottish staff on the penalty area, and then you know Marcus Rashford is close to him trying to get the ball. Luke Shaw is realizing what's going on and going, "Oh God, um, well I shouldn't be here on the overlap." So Luke Shaw peels off the left wing and goes all the way to the penalty area. So you've got that weird situation where adjustments are being made, but also they're not as effective as you want because this is international football. This takes you're trying to cram in like sixty training sessions into three training sessions it can be a lot harder to do the adjustments that you would expect to see in a Premier League game is my really worthy answer I'm not sure if that answered what you asked me it was, a, it was an interesting answer I mean I think Flo what what, um, what the question is, is more getting at I guess is, is Southgate's flexibility during the games I'm going to guess yeah and I think we've mentioned before on this podcast that he's not the best with substitutes. And I think Carl even mentioned it about five minutes ago. <laughs> so um, I think he's not someone who necessarily has a good history with changing games. And like Carl said, at the best of times, it's hard for any international manager and Southgate's not great at, as it is. So it, it, it's a tricky one for England. And I think that's why people are frustrated because when you look at the bench and we talked about Sancho, you think, right, okay, 60 minutes on the clock, Grealish hasn't come on yet. Sancho hasn't come on yet. Rashford hasn't come on yet. Well, not looking too shabby, actually. We could kind of shake things up a little bit. But I think, like we've said numerous times already, when the issue is the way that the fullbacks are playing so much in how England failed is really actually bringing on those attacking players. It's not going to make any difference if you're still playing the same way because you're still going to get stuck like Carl mm -hmm. said, kind of like on the edge of the box, like, oh, what do I do next? And then Sterling's just going to try and win a penalty to bail us out. Um, so it's I think all well just... and good chucking on Sancho and saying, run at him. But if the fullback is not being instructed, when Sancho runs at him, you have to overlap because that takes one extra defender away from Sancho so he can cut inside. That's difficult. And that's very difficult when you've got Reese James, who he played the first 20 minutes like he was a uh, turn up late for work politely put he was very animated but needed a calming down there's a moment where he sort of tracked back to try and head the ball and John Stones made it behind him and as the ball went out for a throw and I saw John Stone sort of pat his head and he just went calm down and it's that thing you can't simply lob a new player into a system and go run at them in international football anymore this is not 2002 unfortunately and I was actually really surprised to see Shaw and James just dropped in like that um, well, yeah. You know, perhaps, and this is probably a bit of an insult to 
Scotland fans and and Steve Clark. I think you know this is probably one of the strongest Scottish teams that they've had in a while. But I think you know Southgate probably thought, well, I can take this risk because we've won our first game and we are against weaker opposition, especially Croatia, and we'll probably get through it regardless. So it was almost like an experiment, mm-hmm. but it was interesting to drop in those two players when England played pretty well in that opening game. And they, you know, James hadn't featured at all in the friendlies. So that I found that really surprising and it'll be interesting to see what happens on Tuesday if he sticks with that again, because that seems like what he wants to do if he had, if he could choose, you know, his best 11, if are those are the fullbacks he's going for, or he reverts back to the Croatia game, or he does a little bit of a mix and match, which I know is what a lot of, I think a lot of the, what the writers have predicted is a bit of a mix, mix and match affair. But it, like Carl said, it is a little bit frustrating if you're going through every single round of a, of a tournament and still trying to work out what your best 11 is. Mm-hmm. It's a little bit like, oh, yikes, when other teams, you know, can name it instantly and they know who, you know, they know who the team that is going to get them to the final could be. France, I mean, obviously France made a couple of changes yesterday, but there are other sides who know it like the back of the hand and Southgate still seems to be scribbling around on a napkin a little bit on the sidelines. Hello, I'm David Ornstein, and I'm here to tell you what The Athletic has planned across its podcast network during the Euros. You can catch me alongside Mark Chapman and a range of other athletic writers on The England Show throughout the tournament, bringing you the very latest news and insight from The England Camp every single day. Prior to the big kickoff, we're releasing an eight part documentary series telling the stories of the past eight tournaments, starting with the sounds and smells of Euro 88 and finishing in 2016. There'll also be nightly episodes of the Totally Football Show, nine zonal marking podcasts from Michael Cox's tactics and analytics team, and Adam Hurry's football cliches. We'll take a look at the competition's alternative storylines. So, with what felt like a never-ending domestic season finally behind us, we've got all of your Euro 2020 needs covered. Check out every show for free wherever you get your podcasts.